Thank you to uh, Barry Bowman. Thank you to uh, who else? Brinson Frank. Thank you to uh, Roy Powell. And thank you to Donald Spikes. Does that, all, does that cover all of them? Yesterday we trimmed all these trees out here and they tried to kill me. But come on, y'all. Too young to die. But uh, we had a great time and we sweated it out. So thank God for those guys and getting this property to what it needs to be. And uh, just anytime you get somebody say, hey, I got a lift. Do you want to use it? You say, cancel everything else I've got and go, right? And uh, when it's free, it's pretty good. So praise God for that. We thank God for those men who helped us yesterday. And I'm glad you're here today. If we have any guests, I know we have several guests. If you're a guest with us, Creator Church, how we feel about these people? We're glad you are with us today. We, of course, uh, want to value your time. We know that it's very important to you, or at least we hope it is. Time is an entity you can't get back. Uh, Miss Lindsay, give me somebody to turn these air conditioners up. People are shaking, and it's not the Holy Spirit. So let's please get those, just turn them up. Just not too much now. We don't want to sweat, but just bump them up till they click off and give people a break from the winter. All right? And so uh, thank God for you. If you're a guest with us today, I'm glad you're here. Uh, we were at that Hardyville gig last night, uh, the 4th of July. I thought it was really good. And uh, just tag teaming with the city, trying to make this town a better place. You know what's wrong with that? Not one thing. So the church and the city ought to have a bridge between them called relationship. And so we want to form a good relationship there. Who knows how that will turn out? Amen? And so we want to develop a, just a commonality between the two. We're all really in the same business. That's the development and the bettering of you, all humanity. So uh, I want you to turn with me, if you will, please, in your Bible uh, to the book of... Uh, let's go to the end of the book of John. Uh, the Gospel of John, the last chapter, is where I'll preach from this morning. And for some reason in the last six months, I have felt just penetratingly guilty about my sermon preparation. So let me explain what I mean by that. For so many years, I've been one that's just very diligent, you know, about prayer and study. And I'm still diligent about prayer, but I don't do as much... Um, typing and writing as I used to, mainly because I'm finishing up uh, that book. But um, I, the Lord has just been sort of doing something. It's not because I'm lazy. I almost think He wants me to depend on Him more, amen, instead of uh, something that I'm come churning over with Him. He almost wants me to lean entirely on Him. So the last couple of weeks have been sort of scary for me because it's been Sunday morning, uh-oh, if any of you have ever public, anybody ever uh, got into public speaking and it's Saturday and Sunday and you don't have a clue what you're going to say for that meeting, you're just absolutely petrified. So this morning I woke up and I sat down to pray and praise God it came to me. Amen. So these are these last minute uh, filet mignon. Come on, y'all. So um, that's, it is what it is. So go to the last um, chapter of the Gospel of John. I tell you what, go to Acts 1. Flip to the next page. I'll read out of Acts 1. Uh, I'm going to switch gears here. Uh, Acts chapter 1 is just the next page of your Bible. This is Jesus speaking to a group of people called the disciples. And he tells them in Acts chapter 1, he says in verse 4, And they were assembled together with them. He commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he, you have heard of me. Jesus said, I don't want you to leave this city until you have received my words in the form of the promised Holy Spirit, which in verse 5, he uh, told them was the Holy Ghost, which they would receive not many days from that point. And uh, he said, but don't leave. Stay here. Stay in this area, stay here until you receive the promise. Then in chapter 2 of the book of Acts, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Men and women all in one place, not in one mind, but in one accord, the Bible says. One accord they were. Um, they were undivided with, in one accord. They were there in one place, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound. So it says one place. They were sitting. Look at the end of verse 2. They were sitting 
and it filled all the house where they were sitting. We kind of see it like the day of Pentecost was a bunch of people running around screaming in different tongues. But they were seated, seated, set down, and the Holy Ghost fell on them. But they were in one place. They were positioned, seated. They were at rest. And the Bible says in verse number 2 of chapter 2, they were all filled. But it is because in chapter 1 and verse 4, Jesus told them, don't leave this spot until you get the promise that you've heard me tell you about, which was and is the promised Holy Ghost. So today, I want to do something very unusual, very weird. I've never preached this before, never even had this thought. It's so simple you might choke on it, but please don't. Give me about eight minutes to lay this out, and then we will, we will gain altitude. I want to preach to you on why, why I go to church. Now, there's a story in the Bible of a man by the name of Saul. He's the king. And he, through disobedience, has contracted a demon. He's got a full-blown demon which torments him. <clears throat> so we know that demons are real and they come with a certain uh, level of torment. The devil is not sent to annoy you. He is sent to destroy you. And so Saul, through disobedience, envy, jealous, malice, and all these things, he attracted a demonic spirit. So the, the brains of the bunch decided, we need an exorcist. We need somebody who can somehow spiritually Ouija board this demon out of you, or at least give you a spiritual Prozac so that you can calm down and you can deal with this demon. So they found a guy who was the son of Jesse, David, and they brought him to Saul's house. This is weird. And the Bible says, I'll literally read it, it came to pass when the evil spirit was upon Saul that David took a harp and he played the harp and Saul was refreshed and was well and the evil spirit would leave him. David would play the evil spirit would go. David would stop playing. The evil spirit would come back. So we know that demons traffic and satanic forces, they traffic. They move around. They don't just stay. They don't stay in the same uh, entity. They'll stay in the same bloodline, but they like to the traffic. So David's presence brought about through his ability to worship and his gift unto worship brought about an exorcism for this guy named Saul. So what happens is when we come together, there are two things that happen when we meet in this room, if this is your church or you meet anywhere, when we, when we meet corporately and collectively in this church together, there's two things that happen. Number one, when we worship, we attract a different atmosphere than the one that is currently here. Just like when they turn these big air units on, you can hear the air coming out and you can hear the air flowing. You can't see it, but you can. if I were to take this piece of paper, you can see it blowing, moving that paper. That's airflow. So there's five levels to the earth's atmosphere. We're in the first one. So planes fly in one. Weather happens in another. You, can, you have to put a helmet on in another if you're going to float in space. Space shuttles and rockets operate in another. Asteroids operate in another. So we know that atmospheres are real. If you don't believe it, fight in the car on the way to church, then come into church. From one atmosphere to the next atmosphere. So we know that that invisible world is very, very real. I told you last week, the invisible world is the only thing that will actually attract people who are teenagers and kids. They don't want to hear your good old gospel ship. They want to see the, the, they want to see the ship levitate. They have to know that the spiritual world is real. Advantage to go into this church, we believe in miracles and in the supernatural. We believe if you've got a demon, you can evict him today. Can I hear an amen? Saul has a demon. 
David has a gift from God. It's the same gift you have. It is the privilege to worship God. So when we come together, we worship the name and the person of Jesus. So two things happen when we come together as the church, when we go to church, and when we become the church in a moment. And it can happen in 30 seconds. It can happen, it can happen right now. It can happen at the end of the service. Here's what happens. When we come together, we attract and we draw on the presence of God. That's number one. Somebody may say, oh, I sense the power of God here. Well, great. That means somebody is linked up where any two or three agree. Jesus said, I am in the midst of them. Is that Bible? Okay. So when we come together and we worship like that, it attracts the presence of God. But that's not all it does. When we corporately, collectively, together come in one setting, in one accord, maybe not in one mind, but one accord, in one place, and we're together, we not only attract God's presence, but we literally defeat the defeated one. Well, why do we have to defeat him if he's defeated? He's Jesus defeated him. Why do we have to defeat him? Every time you come together, you are reminding the enemy you are still defeated. Every time you walk in this room and you lift one hand, you are echoing to the enemy you are still defeated. You are drawing the presence of God and you are lockjawing the power of the enemy in your life. Now, when they threw Daniel in a den of lions, it was, he, the Bible doesn't say he got in there and did anything supernatural, does it? We don't know that he did a cartwheel and hollered hallelujah. We don't know that he showed them his creative church, uh, church car logo. We don't know anything of that. He got in a den of lions and because of his position in God, he was walking in the presence of God. So there was at least two powers present. There was the power of nature, those giant cats that could have eaten him alive, right? But there was also another presence that was within him called the power of prayer. So when he came out of that prayer window, that prayer closet, and he was thrown at den of lions, God acknowledged locked jaw on the enemy. They could not touch him. He could have pet them. He could have wrestled with them. They did not have the power because they had been put on lock jaw by the power of his prayer life. Because when they threw Daniel in the den of lions, they also threw his prayer life in there too. Okay, let me prove it. So Saul had a demon. David's a gift to worship brought about the eviction of that demon. So in Matthew 16, this is something that we touched on a couple years ago. Jesus said, I will build my church, my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. So in uh, chapter 16, verse 18, he says, I will build my church. In verse 19, he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. The church is the ambulance in the empire known as the kingdom. We literally drive around picking up dead bodies. Come on, y'all. Dragging them into the harvest field called the kingdom of God. That's why the protocol of this room is so important. You may think as a greeter or an usher or whatever you do, it's not important or media is not important. But we literally are ushering people to the surgery table of God. An ambulance with a flat tire is not the gospel. Come on, y'all. We have to have gas. We have to have a horn that works. We have to have a siren. So the time of conversion in a service like this is your most important moment. Now, when do people get converted? We don't always know. Sometimes the seed hits the soil, and it's in a moment that it's not in an altar call. That's why if every Sunday you get addicted to a Pentecostal reaction, you'll just get more Pentecostally. Some people are, are more in love with the memory, woo, I'm preaching good now, of what was versus the power of what is. Some things that have been so transformational in my life didn't come when I fell out in the Spirit. They came when God spoke to me and the light bulb came on inside of me. Can I get a witness this morning? So it's just when I was sitting in one place and one accord and God spoke to me and transformation occurred. Now, this is very offensive to people who are uh, um, probably high in ego or high in offense is this. 
that all churches are not created equal. I used to think that. If anybody would have said that from a pulpit, I would have thought, man, this person has lost their mind. God loves every. What are you talking about? That all churches are not created equal. God loves every church, and every church has unique ministries. But when I say church... I'm not just talking about the ethereal, spiritual, mystical body of Christ because right now you have a brother and a sister across the ocean. They're called Christians who have named the name of Jesus. They're our brother and our sister, correct? But did you know that God has placed a power in place? So let's, let's reboot here a second. Jesus said, don't leave this town. Now you're with me, right? Don't leave this town. Don't leave this spot. Don't leave this street until you get what I've told you. Now, why would God do that? Why would Jesus say that? Because there is a distinct power in place in the eyes of God. If God did not honor geography, why would Megiddo, the battle of the Armageddon, be in the Megiddo Valley, outskirts of Israel? Why would, why would Israel be called the apple of God's eye? Why would God say about Iraq and Iran that they were a wound that would never be healed? That you could, you could, you could never get that spirit to be uh, converted. What, you want to know why? Because Iraq and Iran is ancient Babylon, the Tigris-Euphrates River. God said that is a principality that will never bow its knee. You will have war with the children of Ishmael until eternity starts or stops because God said in his word that that area was a wound that could never be healed. Come on, y'all. You can never heal that. Those people will cover their women from head to toe and murder their child. Come on. And while we scream for women's rights, I don't get that. Come on, y'all. I can't imagine me telling my wife, I don't want to see nothing but your eyes. Hello, operator. Come on, somebody. You better find something better than that. <laughs> and so um, th there, there is a power in place. So in Acts 1, Jesus said, listen, right here, don't leave this spot until you receive the promise. So there is a power in place. Geographically, God sees things Differently, Let me prove it. In Deuteronomy, I, I never realized this until this morning, until today. Uh, maybe I did and did not know it. But in Deuteronomy 12, oh, we're not under the Old Testament. First of all, there's no testament in the Bible that's old. There's a first one and there's a, there's a last one. The last testament is in the blood of Jesus. The first testament was by the blood of animals. Somebody says, well, Deuteronomy, that's the law of Moses. It's not the law of Moses. Moses didn't have a law. God had a law and he gave it to Moses. Am I doing okay this morning? So it doesn't mean that the, the first covenant is not relevant. So in Deuteronomy 12, listen to what God says uh, to, to us as a people. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to call his name to dwell there. Um, but unto the place which the Lord God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name. Take heed to yourself that you do not offer your burnt offerings in every place, but in the place. You must not eat these sacrifices before the Lord, but only in the place. Verse 21, if the place, the place, and over and over and over, place, 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 place. Here's why. Because God did not want them making their sacrifices just anywhere. God did not want them giving their money to just anything. God did not want them going just anywhere. He wanted to make sure they knew there was a place that God had designed for them. Let's go ahead. This is an equal opportunity sermon and everybody have the chance to be offended. Here it is. There are people that literally believe that they can go from place to place to place. I'm preaching good now. And just receive the blessing. That's not biblical. Jesus said, don't leave this city until you are endued with power from on high because there is a blessing and a power in place. Now, let me prove this even further. 
uh, when Elijah, Elijah with a J, when he was um, coming off the uh, Mount Carmel experience and victory, here's what God said to him. God said, get out of here and turn east and go hide yourself by a brook. Now, a brook is a small stream, which is what this church is right now. We're a small stream. We're not going to stay a small stream, but we're currently a small stream. And it shall be that you shall drink from the brook, for I have commanded the, the ravens to feed you there. Now, could he have gone anywhere? He could not have gone anywhere. He could have in his human volition went anywhere, but God would not have told the birds to bring him biscuits because there's a power in place. Then when the brook dried up, because it will, God said, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to a region called Zidon, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman and her family there to sustain you. If he would have went to another widow's house, well, let's stay there. She's single. Well, let's go there. She's rich. Let's he would have not have been sustained. It would have been family feud because there's a power in place. There's a power in place. There's a power in place. So let me tell you why I fully believe in a great church like this one. Here's why. Because Jesus said, I will build my church and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Because there are some Sunday mornings, maybe a lot for you, that you wake up and your physical body does not want to go to church. There's some Wednesdays or whatever day that you, you don't even want to be here. So Jesus said, behold, I will build my church. So when you don't feel like loving on God, he don't kick you out. God does not abandon, he withdraws. God did not allow Saul, uh, he didn't grant Saul's demon. He backed out of Saul's life because Saul wanted to be disobedient. And when God backs up, he takes the locks on the doors with him and it allows the gates of your life to open. Are you with me this morning? Okay, give me just a minute here. So if we're in the body of Christ and we walk in obedience, a disobedience rather, God will back up and he will say, I tell you what, if you want to do it, do it on your own. And of course, we've all ran down that road before of, hey, this didn't work out like I thought it would, and you know, this is not working for me. And we've all cried out to God. We don't have a need for God. We have a desperate, violent need for God. We don't just need God. We need God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So when we back up, God, rather, when we uh, don't submit, God backs up and says, okay, not a problem. If you want to drive the plane, I'll be there when you crash it, and I'll help you put it back together. Because God is a good God. God is full of grace and mercy. So when God allowed this uh, demon uh, to attack Saul, and he stood back through the gift of worship. Hold on. Through David's gift. doesn't say David sang. He played the harp. Listen to me. He played the harp. Everybody has a gift that draws God's presence and drives off, drives off the devil. We are to use that gift in the same setting. Everybody in this room can lift their hand. You say, I can't, I've got shoulder problems. You can do this. Everybody can lift their chin. Oh, I can't, I got neck problems. You can lean back. Come on, somebody. So whenever how you want to choose your style of dance or worship, the moment we come together, watch this, when we worship God, that is the moment that God has the opportunity to step into our situation. Are you with me this morning? See, this word is a plow that breaks up the dirt and God waters and God plants, but God comes down through the ability of worship and worship moistens the soil of the soul so we can have the cognitive awareness to receive what God is speaking to me. So all of my life, literally all of my life, my entire life, all of my life, I've been on cycles. My entire life. My entire life, I have been in a pattern. Now You can look holy, but you have to. Your entire life is patterns, gerbils, and mouse uh, rats on a wheel. That's, we're in this race. Your entire life is cycles. You ready for this? Turn my mic down just a little bit. Bring, bring the volume on this mic down. I'm hot. I'm on fire for God. I'm ablaze, right? And then you come to, come on, where are we? Come to where? You come to where? You come to church. You come to where? And somebody offends you. And But you're mature in the Lord, aren't you? Aren't you? You're mature. So you don't quit the church, you just back up. I'm preaching good now. Watch this, watch. 
Now you gave your keys away. Oh, I'm preaching good now. So the next Sunday, you ain't got your keys. You still got your occupancy. You still own, you still own your worship, but now you don't have your keys, see? This is why I go to church, because my entire life has been a cycle. What do you mean? I can show you the patterns of my life. In fact, I will look at my spouse and say, don't mess with me in this season. I don't know how much bread and oil I've got. I don't know how much strength I've got. But don't bother me because I've got to get to the end of this cycle and then I will rest. Honey, when are you going to sit down? I'm going to sit down when I feel this church moving forward. Honey, when are you going to take a break? I'm going to take a break when God tells me to take a break. I'm going to, why? Why? Because I've got so much strength for this journey and then I'll sit down in grace and mercy and I'll get filled back up and then I'll run the next cycle. And then I'll back up and I'll rest. And then I'll run the next cycle. You sow for 30, you reap for 30. I'm, I'm, it's, it's all a cycle. Some of you before, when you were a teenager, you were out there in that building over there on fire for God. Then you backed up because that one hurt me, that one left me, this happened, and you backed up on God. So when, the, here's why I go to church. Because for 37 years now, I know I know God loves me. For 20 of the years, years I've been a member of the church of Jesus Christ. Watch. But many times, I don't have my own keys. Somebody else has got them. So the reason I go to church when I don't feel like it is even when I don't feel like praising, Thelma Glover feels like praising. And if I just get near old David, come on somebody, I'll get the anointing based on their praise. If I can just get near somebody else's hope, joy, and peace, it'll rub off on me. You may have come to church a thousand times and it be the one person that you think doesn't even like you walks up to you and says, says, I just want to tell you what a blessing you are. Some people are not in hell because somebody reached out to them on a Sunday morning and put their arms around them and a little bit of love goes a long way. Brick by brick by brick by brick even though it's his church, sometimes I don't got the key to my own door, but you got it. So the beauty of why we go to church is when I don't have the key, somebody else does. Because where any two or three get together in his name, he said he'll honor that place. Man, this is good. He'll honor that place. See, I'm a great liar. I'll wait on you. I can make it look on the outside like I'm doing great. But on the inside, I'm listening for a sound of somebody to just tell me we're going to be all right. Look at me while you lie too. Come on, right there, right there, honest human. Where's the real human? human? Is there any human beings here? I'll just preach to you. I'm telling you what you have to do is this right here. Listen for God to drop you a key. You won't always have the key to your door, but somebody else has got it. Last Sunday, I had this little offertory devotion I gave you this morning. I had it prepared and I didn't look at the order and Pastor Matt was on to do the offering and he got up and he, he started talking and he started preaching my message I was about to preach last Sunday. And I said, oh, hallelujah, I'm gonna open that door now because he put the key in it. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Yesterday I looked at somebody and I, I, I said, I, I, I was just, I was just wasn't even thinking. And I said something to them. And they said, you know, it's funny you, ta you telling me that right now because somebody just told me that this morning. I need to go back to church. Because you don't know what God has pre-prepared on that person and you just put your key in their door and it may not open. Somebody else may come along and push that door right on open and bam, they're out of hell into the kingdom of light. See how that works? See how that works? It's his kingdom. It's our key. But sometimes somebody else has got the key. Would you believe, it's not hard for me, trust me, but would you believe, it's not hard for me, would you believe that from Monday to Saturday, I, I'm I get plagued with this thought, ain't nobody coming Sunday to hear you. <laughs> number one, you boring. Number two, you ain't got nothing to say. And number three, you got the same hair hairstyle all the time. <laughs> There's a power in place. Sometimes you showing up wins the victory. 
If you can drag yourself into church, somebody is going to look. God's going to put it on somebody's heart. I'm going to preach this. To say, look at there. Look at there. Now, she lives with me 24-7. She knows what comes out of my mouth and what, doesn't, what does not come out of my mouth. Now, when we first started preaching and pastoring and people would disappear, where were they? Oh, God, what happened? And we would talk about it. And you know where talking about it gets you? Nowhere. The devil will get in your talk and stir up 18 more reasons invisibly why somebody's not even really offended at you, but you think they are. So at the end of the day, you, so let me tell you how this works. When I come to the house of God and I see people I ain't seen or they're visiting or whatever, man, I'm so, it, it, don't, it don't make me mad. It makes me glad. It gives me hope. I've been on a cycle my whole life. Here it is. Here's my cycle. Get close to the heart of God. Get on fire. Some of y'all think I'm on fire every Sunday. Huh. Sometimes I'm living on others' fire. His fire through me, not my own. Can I get a witness? But how many of you know what I mean when I say you catch a good streak of two or three weeks in a row and it feels like everything you pray in is going to the inner chamber of heaven? Then you hit another streak where your prayer is going right off the dash, right back in the coffee holder. <laughs> I've been on a cycle and you have too. Haven't you? Watch. Love God. Get on fire. Praying, anointed. Man, you feel like you got the devil. You're pulling his last tooth out of his head. You get on another cycle and you feel like I cannot get a leg up. I cannot get a victory. But I'm telling you when, when you consistently, listen, don't drown on this one inch of water. When you consistently mm, come into God's house, you are saying, God... Number one, I honor you. Number two, I honor where you've planted me, oh God. I honor the place you put me in. When you don't feel the power, honor the place. Keep showing up. Listen, you're in a world that is drowning and addicted to positional power. Give me a title. You can take every title I've got and call me Eric and we can be as common as Joe and Jill. But if we don't got the power of God, no title will ever matter. God don't care about our titles. He cares about where we are in him. Down to your last hallelujah. And somebody will come along and say, you know, you really bless me. What? I can't bless myself. Isn't that just like God to send a raven? Mm. Here's why I go to church. Come in. Not feeling it. And somebody will say, you know what, I just want to tell you what a, what a blessing something or another was or is. And man, really? Are you serious? I, I feel this in my spirit. Can I flow a minute? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'd like to acknowledge an unsung hero in this church sitting right here. Right here. Number one puts up with this. Don't shout me down while I'm preaching good. Old school, old school. Gets here early. Oh, I'm preaching now on Sundays. Comes early. I was almost married before I met my wife. Y'all don't know this. And I called my, a spiritual mentor of mine. I said, I just ain't sure about this. I was going to buy this girl a ring. And I called this spiritual, deeply spiritual mentor of mine. And he said, Eric, you don't marry a woman for spiritual reasons only. Or else you're going to roll over every day and say, can you speak in tongues again? <laughs> he said, you need to get married to somebody that you are distinctly drawn and attracted to in every capacity. 
She needs to boil your kettle. <laughs> Give me an amen right there. You need to say, man, this, I, I love that. There needs to be a fire there. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> she gets here early. Sometimes she pulls out, and I'm just putting feet on the floor. Coming to make sure her husband's church is doing pretty good. You don't know, and, I, and it's a battle I lose more than I win, so you pray for me. But, but more times than not, this is my brain power. This is, this is my, my thought. Here it is. Ready? Lord, are we going to make it as a church? I, I, you know, I don't, if they fixing to leave, are they mad? Should I go talk to this one and try to, I don't know what happened there. I'm, I'm trying to clean up this, and this one's, it, 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 and let's see, should I? It's constant. It's, it's, you, never, you can't get away from it. You have to force yourself away from it. It's a cycle. Get on fire for God. And when you get on fire for God, it is the greatest thing in the world. Does anybody know what that is? I'm not talking about a fleeting glimpse of fire. I am talking about when God sets your heart ablaze. And some of you are waiting to get back to the physical place where you were once on fire for God again. And God's saying it wasn't a physical place. It was a spiritual place. And when you find that spiritual place, it won't, the physical place will not matter. Because you can have revival in a graveyard. You can be in the valley and catch a wind of the Spirit and it blow all the smog out of your life. So, I feel like God wanted me to come and say, these are the reasons I go to church. Number one, when I'm not on fire, someone else is. How? Oh. Number two, when I don't feel it, somebody else does. Number three, when I don't get the sermon, it might not be for me now. It might be for me later. Don't ever throw away a fresh piece of bread. It might not be for Sunday. You might need it Monday. Put it in your pocket and keep it. What if it's not all about me? What if I go to church and it wasn't just for me? Remember, this whole service is for him. And if we'll put him in his place, he'll get us to our place. We spend way too much trying, time trying to run to a spiritual place when God's going, be still, and the power will fall. There's power in place. This is not what I want to preach. <laughs> Nothing better to break the cycle than Holy Ghost fire. Let me go there. I'm already there. I'm drowning. I might as well go on and hold my breath. We mock it and people make fun of it. But I'm telling you right now, I don't need a church program. I need a place I can call home. I don't need a property that we can just attract people via the property. I, God's looking for a place. He can say, there is where my name is and there is where my glory is. And if you can just get near there, if you can get near, there's ravens and doves. There's a brook and a stream and a fountain flowing. There's something about place in God. And if you can get to that cleft of the rock, you can get some honey out of that rock. That's why Brownsville was so powerful. Not because of Pastor Kilpatrick. Not because of whatever he says or does or those leaders. God said, this is where I'll set my glory right here. Boom, 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 boom. It took an obedient vessel and God said, there it is. Don't worship the place. Worship his presence. And the place will stay sanctified. Whew. We have people right now, maybe you're here, maybe you're not. I just say that in general. I don't mean like anybody specifically, specifically. <laughs> Arguing over things in our country. And there's babies being left in trash bags and ditches. Come on, somebody. Whew. 
people being murdered, women being raped, and children that are hungry right now. Right now. Don't get addicted to your cycle of it's going to be a certain way all the time, every time. Get there. Get in the place. So let me tell you why I go to church. I go because about four months ago, a guy named Roy, R-O-Y, Roy, called me. And Roy had no idea where I was physically and sure didn't have any idea where I was spiritually. And he said something that blessed my soul. You ready? This is, this is going to be a, a, a one-ton train run over you. Here it is. He said, Pastor Eric, what type of big projects do you have on that property you need somebody to do? I wanted to hang up. I thought, there's no, wake up, Eric. Wake up, you're dreaming. I said, well, how big you want? So he said, you mind if I get a lift out here and fix these lights on the football field? I said, well, of course I don't mind. Help me preach, y'all. That'd be a blessing. Come on, y'all. You have no idea a week ago when a guy named Bryant texted me and said, I'm going to Honduras, but I've got to tell you this. I said, what is it? He said, I'm going... Let me just read it to you. It's, it's that good. He said, I'm going on a, on a missions trip, but it's not really a missions trip. Listen to this. He said, I know it's been crazy the last few weeks, but I want to let you know how much I appreciate you. We're finally going to be helping some of the families in Honduras. This church didn't sponsor that. That man just said, I want to go help people. You know what we said? Go, you got the keys to the kingdom. Come on, y'all. And God has provided all the needs and we will be planting seeds from creative church. I'll be sharing what God has done me, done in me through you to the glory of God. I just want to say thank you for everything that this church has done. If it wasn't for this church, I don't know where I would be in my walk with God. Somebody had some keys he didn't have. You may be here right now and it's a Sunday. You just feel like you don't got it. But there's some people been in this room and serving God 30 years that know if you just hold on, the fire will come back. If you just hold on, the love will come back. If you don't run out and you don't give up and you don't quit, God will do it again. It don't take a lot of brains to sit and critique people. Amen? Somebody had the keys for that guy. You know what somebody asked me recently? They said, Pastor Eric, are, are you going to train Bryant ministerially? I said, I already have. I already did. He's good. He's ready. What do you mean? He's there. He's good. It's better caught than taught. Pastor Matt's got some big dreams. He'll share those with you later. It's better caught than taught. Eight things to do to make people want to come to your church. Try them in eight months. Come talk to me when you're in a psych ward. Come on, y'all. Because this world is set up for one pill per week. And then it changes. Oh, that don't bring them anymore. Oh, no, we don't do that anymore. Come on, y'all. That's why if you'll stick to truth, it'll last. Mm. So I come to commission you today to tell you why I go to church. Here's why I go to church. Because my kids are going to get up and ask me why we're not going. Woo! I got nobody to put in that second seat. Don't look at me like that. I got nobody to drop in that second or third seat on that stage from three weeks ago. My kids are going to say, what's wrong? We're not going. What if I were to say, well, we're not going because we're upset. Come on, y'all. I'm not going because I don't feel like it. I'm not going because I'm broke. I'm not going because I can't afford it. I'm going because it's the only thing I can afford to do. Go into God's house free of charge. Raise my hands. Give a sacrifice from the fruit of my lips and the praise of my heart. And watch God work in my life. You can't beat that exchange for a million bucks.
I go because there's people in this room that are going to be there. Look at a Virginia broom in her 70s and 80s. She don't run in here uh, spirited like she did when she was 20. How you doing, Miss Virginia? Oh, I'm blessed. Well, if you are, I must be blessed too. When I don't have the key, they got the key. Come on, y'all. That is why I go to church. Now, we drown on either side of the street and crash. You ready, you ready for this? Well, it ain't about going to church. <laughs> is, everybody, is everybody okay with that? Let's, let me just, because I have to, here it is. When you miss a Sunday or two, that don't mean you're going to hell. Because your position is not within this brick, mortar, and sheetrock. Your position is seated with Christ in heavenly places. Your, look at me. Your position is secure. You still here? Your condition's what's going to change. Let me say Your position is there. You're secure. When you name, name the name of Jesus, salvation hits your home. Woo. You're fine there. But it's your condition that's going to change. Because under the assumption that I may offend somebody, I don't know who, but probably, this is the way I feel, and it's not the way you have to feel. But I love this church. Because I've seen where it has been. I've noticed where it is at. And I see the keys whew, to where it is going. And God has commissioned me to not allow any devil in my heart, not you, any devil in my heart, to steal what I see in my heart concerning this church. Eric, don't let it get you. Don't let it get you. Don't let it get you. And don't settle into normal church. Y'all, if you've come here eight weeks and I've been in this little silver pulpit with this microphone and I'm holding this mic and it's getting a little bit blah, blah, blah. Go ahead and tell me. Go ahead and tell me the squeaky a wheel needs some oil or replace the wheel. Go ahead and say, Pastor, you, you need to pray. Hallelujah, let me know. When church becomes normal, it becomes dangerous. Church is a burden that is comfortable only when you're there. On the way here, you're fighting it. Ooh. On the way here, you're fighting it. Ooh, about to jump out of this car. Come on, y'all. I don't need to go. Eight reasons I shouldn't go. Can't go. I don't know how I'm going to eat tomorrow, but I'm going to this place because something special is going to happen. Like I'm an elephant in a circus. Where's the peanuts at? God says, if you'll get there, He'll work it out. That used to happen in my house as a kid. You want to see hell, try getting up on Sunday morning going to church. You will never fight the devil. But here's the great thing. You know when he's fighting, something's waiting at church. Something's there. Buildings don't save people. Property does not transform people. They built a new beautiful public library that won't bring any more readers. You have to develop the passion for that. That's what draws people. There are people that go to music festivals and use the bathroom on themselves because they want to be in that atmosphere. They'll just go where they are at a concert, at a venue, because they want that. They don't want to miss a moment. I don't have any rednecks in here who've been to a concert. <laughs> Help me preach. They, what, they won't even go to the porta potty. They don't want to miss a moment. <sighs> they got to get it all while they there. But we walk in here. Come on, y'all. 
Come on, let's go. It's too quiet. It's too loud. It's too dark. I'm trying to get these lights where you can up or down them so we can have a little bit more light. Because one side of the aisle says it's too dark and God don't dwell in darkness. <laughs> Other side of the aisle says, I, I, I like it. I'm fine. Don't bother me any. I mean, I watch a movie in the dark. I, well, I'm good with it. Don't, I don't even think about that. I don't even care. Like, who says that? I don't, I don't, who cares? They don't even pay tithes. Who cares? <laughs> I got preacher friends. And I love them. Turn them lights out. The devil's in the dark. I want to say, hey, you might not want to read Exodus 19 and Hebrews 12 and 13. The Bible said God came on top of that mountain and said, don't you touch this mountain. I'll show up in a dark cloud. Jesus showed up at 3 o'clock in the morning walking on water in a storm. <laughs> Talk about dark. The disciples, day one of vacation, they met a man. And he said, my name's Legion. Oh, we're on vacation. None of that now. You talk about dark. Now this, look at me. This generation of sitting in the dark and just, oh, I just want to soak in His presence. I don't have a job. Oh, I have no purpose. I'm just a spiritual gypsy. Could you move over there so lightning don't hit both of us? Can I get a witness? Could you, could you slide over a little bit? You hadn't bathed in a few days. Please slide over. No. I don't go to church to sit in the dark. Come on, y'all. I go to church because I got kids looking at me. And you do too. I go to church because I got angels watching my activity. Come on, y'all. I go to church because I've got demons watching the cycles of my life. They know when I run off stage. They know my weaknesses. They know what draws me away from God, and they know what, they know what draws me to God. I got, all, I, got, I got that on me. I got that on me. I go to church for not for today, but somebody tomorrow called another generation coming after me. Come on, y'all. They're going to come to church in their shorts and their muscle shirts. I say let them come. Come on, y'all. They're going to come with a tattoo down their leg. I say let them come. Come on. They're going to come just like they are, and you can't fix them, and you can't change them anyway. You might as well put them on the hand of God anyway. We got children and grandchildren that I am responsible unto Almighty God that there needs to be something in this place, on this address, latitude, longitude, right here, that we've got to leave them, not just the semblance of worship, but the reality of a miracle working God. I've got to stand before God for this spot of ground and how I left it. And I'm not going to leave this to the next generation to say we just became the coolest church in town and that's it. No. And by the way, I used to be one of those two where Sunday mornings used to make me crazy. This is not right. That's not right. Oh my God, that rug's off. Oh my God, fix the offering plate. They put the rug far too back here. Oh my God, Bridget left the ferns out again. Never mind, let the ferns grow. Where for, let it grow, let it grow. Uh, this is the, oh my God, look at that on the top. Oh my God, we need to, I used to, now I just walk in going, thank you Jesus for air conditioner. Thank you God for people that'll show up to hear the word of God. Here's my sermon in a nutshell. Why I go to church? I may not have my fire, but you might have my match. You might have my gas. Let's go old school for 10 minutes. Y'all remember them old school services? Somebody would stand up and say, I just want to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Glory to God. He's done something in my life, and I just want to let the world know about it. And they'd sit down. And another one pop up. Well, you know what? I want to praise God too. He's been better to me than he has to you. I've been obeying God in the area of my tithe, and the devil had me hook, line, and sinker, but God showed up in my life. And, another, and it would start popping like popcorn. Pretty soon, the waters would start flowing. Come on, somebody. And the Spirit would start moving in those old 
old school services. And it would go from a praise meeting to a prayer meeting to a revival meeting. And nobody sang a song. Nobody juked this or that. Everybody just what? They begin to testify of how good God was. Listen, when you don't have the key, somebody else has got the key. We were so broke one time, I was praying God. I said, God, I need some money. He said, what kind? I said, American. He said, go lay your hands on your mailbox. I said, Get, are, are you serious? Lay my hand. Was the mail carrier winning the lottery? We lived in a home. I walked outside. Did I do this? I laid my hands on the mailbox. I went. Oh, y'all holy today. I laid my hands on my mailbox. I said, well, uh, repent, mailbox. <laughs> Get right. That was a Wednesday. Friday, a woman from North Alabama sent me a $700 check, and I fed my kids. Don't tell me God can't speak there when I'm standing here because there's power in place. When you get in the place you need to be with God, even if you don't feel the fire is hot, and, oh, man, I'm just so on fire for God, well, that'll come and go. Get that blue flame. A blue flame is two people who have been married 30, 40, 50 years. And one says to another, the old woman says to the old man, ah. he says, what? Uh-huh. And the old man says, I can't understand you. He gets her to the hospital. She was having like a stroke. They miraculously the woman got healed or something and she came to and she said I thought I was dying and I was trying to tell you I loved you and you wouldn't say a word to me he said honey I thought you were saying I'm tired of you I'm tired of you I'm tired of you <laughs> come on y'all but when you've been married that long she said we've been married 51 years y'all better translate uh -huh. <laughs> you can quit tomorrow. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up on Mark and Linda Wise. I'm not giving up on Lindsey Clark. I thank God for Glennis Bowman that Craig Rimmel walked in here and saw Miss Glennis. My only question is what color hair did she have that week? <laughs> I don't know how he found her. I'm so glad he found her. I'm not giving up on people in this room right now that are believing God for something that far lasts longer than a Sunday morning jig. I'm looking for something that'll last to my grandkids. Come on, y'all. I'm looking for God to raise up a body of believers on this campus that swarms this town, that walks through this community where people come from miles around to say, we don't know what you, we're not doing anything. We've opened up the door for Holy God to come in and he's came in and brought a fire with him. I'm ready for God to set this place on fire and if for no other reason, that's why I go to church. What if this is the day that God says, I'm stepping back in and taking back over. I say, let him have it. I can't do it anyway. Let him have it. I don't care if we have an opening number and Kim walks around singing till it's time to preach. I don't care if we give money up front or while they walk out there. I don't care. Just let God have it. Put it in order. Let him have it, give it to him, and let him set people on fire. Well, it may not last. It'll last as long as yours did. It'll last till the next time it's time. See, he gets them from glory to glory, right? Faith to faith. You ain't always up and up, but you don't have to get out and out. You can stay in by just being in the place God told you to be in. Did you hear that? Jesus said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. 
But go right back into that city. Woo, you ready? And don't leave until you're endued with power from on high. God honors place. God honors place. There's a guy in this town. You'd know him if I said his name. He's a good guy. He just doesn't think before he speaks. We had a meeting, and the mayor was there. So the mayor walked in, and the guy asked the mayor a question. He didn't know he was the mayor. The mayor said, you know, such and such. And the guy said, I'll tell you what's wrong. I'll tell you what's wrong with this town right here. He didn't know he was talking to the mayor. He said, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with this town. A bunch of rich people moved in, formed Sun City, where all that swamp water is supposed to go, and all that flood water. A bunch of rich maniacs from the north and came here and took over, and that's why I moved up the interstate. Hardyville ain't what it used to be, bless God. Who are you? He said, I'm the mayor. I stood there and thought, got the guts of Rambo, but the brains of a sand nap. No discernment. No discernment. Mm. Just shot the cow, the milk jug, and the farmer. No discernment. Boy, that guy started backpedaling. When the mayor said, well, I'm one of those Yankees that lives in Sun City, you know, man. Sorry. No discernment. No. There is such a freedom in knowing solely what God has told you He was going to do in your life and serving along the way and not even thinking of will you get to where you want to be in the eyes of man. See, I was a 19-year-old evangelist. You go to camp meeting, you throw your cards up where, please have me come to preach, please have me come to preach, oh, please, please. You know, you, you have to build your, your, your schedule. You have no idea how it feels to be a 37-year-old man going, I don't need to go anywhere to preach. Amen. Now they call and I say, well, I'm going to check my schedule. <laughs> I'm busy on Sundays. Because I love to honor the place God has planted me. You can quit tomorrow. Me, I'm going to be here for your teenagers. I ain't got teenagers yet, Pastor. You will have them because of what you're doing in the dark. Come on, somebody. You're going to have kids like that. That's what's going to happen. That's how they come. They come in the dark. I'm going to be here when your kids are from diapers, teenagers. I'm going to live I'm going to live to take Ron Spikes' son on a youth trip. Come on, y'all. I'm going to live to take some of y'all's little babies on trips and drive 90 miles an hour in a van. I cannot wait to get them out of hell. Because I'm not just thinking about my fire. I'm thinking about their fire. Where they're going. What they're doing. That's why I go to church. I'm going for me and somebody else. Have you honestly ever thought about the reasons you go to church? You may not have the key. Somebody else may have the key. Behold, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom. If you don't know how to manage money, get around somebody who does. If your marriage is struggling, take me and Lindsay to the Waffle House. We fought all over the marriage rock. She hit me with a marriage rock. We have been so close to the brinking point. We're closer now than we've ever been. You know why? We were thrown in the fire. Grow a church. You'll, you'll break through a breakdown for sure. But it brought us closer. I pulled a U-Haul truck 
up into my driveway. We lived across the street from her family. And I brought, I, I, I moved her 800 miles from her family, y'all. Her mama was hoping I would fall off a cliff. <laughs> and we came here with nothing. Two small kids and a prayer. I'm going to be here. I ain't going nowhere. <clears throat> Not going anywhere. A couple months ago, this church called me. They run about 2,000 people in my line, honey. And they said, we'd like you to consider. I said, I appreciate that. That ain't the place God's called me. This is where God's called me. My wife said, well, you need to pray about it. She didn't. She said, what do you think? I said, what do you think? She said, did God tell you to do that? I said, nope. She said, you ain't going nowhere. To show you how assured she is, she's trying to buy land. I'm trying to feed the hungry Clark kids. This woman is shopping for land. Lord have mercy, that's faith. God wants to give you your fire back. Y'all know I don't preach like this. I'm usually A, B, C, D, get, let's go, let's get, in a, uh, uh, let's get on a row and let's hoe the row, and let's get a harvest. God wants to give you your fire back. It's time to get your fire back. And this is what's going to happen. Look at me. It's not going to be, we got to go to church today. It's going to be, oh man, I can't wait to get there. Fire. Whew. Does anybody need your fire for life back? You complain all you want to. Where's Mercedes? Is she in this room? Come here, Mercedes. <clears throat> Y'all think God would forgive her if she wasn't here this morning? Y'all think anybody's got an excuse to not be at church, it would be her? If this human being right here can watch her son get his back gaped open two or three times and still say God is just so good and he's leading us through this, tell me again why. Come on, somebody. You can't get your fire back. Here's a mother watching her son in agony. And you want to you want to fix it, you know, as a parent. You want to just reach in and say, I want to fix my kid. But you can't. You have to trust doctors who you don't know if they're ready to kill somebody or heal somebody. Most of all, you're trusting God. We have said for how many years now, Mercedes, you know, one day God's going to heal Bella totally and she's going to run across this room. There's something you can get physically that you can't get through a live stream. Let's prove it. This is my prayer. When God heals her daughter, I only say that because Bella's older, you know, I've known her longer. The story's older. I don't want to watch it via live stream. <laughs> I want to see it in action. I was there when it happened. Oh, I'm going old timey on y'all. So I guess I ought to know. Y'all don't know that old stuff. Well, I know when Jesus saved me, y'all don't know that, the very moment he forgave me, it's gray under here. I want to be there and go, well, there's that promise fulfilled. Doesn't happen when we think. Let me tell you another reason I go to church. You don't know what miracle's going to happen. The ones you can see and ones you can't see. Amen. Stand on your feet with me. Father, I thank you right now.
for this woman showing up as a living example of why we go to God's house. Stretch your hands toward Mercedes. Father, give this family strength this morning. Give them wherewithal. Give them discernment. Give them wisdom. Give them know-how. Give them the ability to endure, persevere. May, may they fall apart on you. May they lean in your direction, Lord. Today, I ask you for a fresh fire on Mercedes in the name of Jesus. Without formality, without jumping through hoops, God, I anoint her right now and I say fire. The fire of God flutter in your spirit and in your soul. Stir around in her, oh God, and let her leave here blazing with the promises of God. I want every person in this room that wants your fire back, lift one or both of your hands. We're not asking God to do something from 1942. God's not living in 1942. Just stay here with us. God's not living in 1901. God's not in 1816. God's right here right now. God's past, present, and future. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Pastor Eric, I want my fire back. Come on, lift your hands. Woo! Who can know your glory? Huh. The fire of God comes into this house even now, I ask, Lord, I pray. Peter didn't petition you and beg you. He demanded in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That's a demand. He commanded that crippled man to rise up and walk. So, Father, stir us up today with a new love and a new fire from an old experience. Yesterday is gone. We don't need 83 reasons to go to church. I hear the Lord whispering to us as a people, everything's going to be okay. If you're in a battle this morning, everything's going to be okay. Receive that. Receive that. Oh, lift your hands high. I want my fire back. Bring your fire. Bring your hand. Meet me in this altar this morning. Quickly. Come on. We're not delaying. We're not waiting. We're not going to be here an hour. We're going to be here maybe five or ten minutes. But for those who will respond, you're getting your fire back today. The Lord Almighty and the Spirit of God has come to ignite you, to carry you, to pick you up to propel you forward honor the place honor the place even if it's a, it's a valley honor the place you're in you don't have to live there and stay there but honor the place I am where I am but I'm not staying here so. Hallelujah. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus yes Lord yes Lord Move in tighter with me. Come on up here. Just take a couple of steps forward. Lift your hands for me, if you will. All across this altar, I speak and declare a fresh fire from heaven. A fresh fire from heaven. A fresh fire on the people that desire it. A fresh fire on the people. You want to change? You want to get better? You want to get a new mind? You want a better perspective? You want a brand new attitude? You want a brand new palette to paint on the words, the, 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 the image God has given you? You want a fresh start? You want to start over? You want a clean slate? You want to be free? You want God to give you wisdom? You want to be blessed? You want to be renewed in your heart? Not a problem for God. God can do that for you. God can do that for you. God can do that for us, can He? Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey, look at me. Everybody look at me. The Lord just spoke to me. Look at me. The Lord just spoke to me. Look, everybody, every, every hour right here, just a second. We'll move on. The Lord just spoke to me. Yes. Who holds the key to this service? Come on. Point at yourself. Come on, point at yourself. You're holding the key to this service. It's you. It's you. Now try this again. Try this again. We hold the key to this service right here, right now. We hold the key to this service. We get from God what we want from God. We have as much as God right now as we want. Oh. This church can't live off Sunday mornings. This church can't live off a sermon, a preacher, uh, 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 the prayers of a prayer team the music ministry of this one or that one, videos, kids ministry, we can't live off those things. We have to live off the presence of God and the Word of God. 
fresh, so Lord, we say more of you. Come on. We say, yes, Lord, you are the answer. Fresh fire, fresh wind, come. Set me ablaze. Holy Ghost or bust. Holy Ghost or bust. I don't want my way. I don't want their way. I want your way, Lord. Holy Ghost or bust. And I'll remain, Lord. Keep us in this spiritual vein, oh God, until we're endued from power from on high. Yes, 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 we say yes to you, Lord. I'm open to you, Lord. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. Set me on fire, Lord. Don't let me wait on the hands of prophet, apostle, so-and-so, Lord. I receive the Holy Ghost. And they were all with one accord seated, and they begin to be filled. Whew. Woo, chef. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, over my sister, I pray fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire over my sister. You're going to live. God's giving you a brand new perspective. Fresh fire. Fresh fire over Penny. Fresh fire over Roberta. Fresh fire over Greg. Oh. Do something so deep in his heart, Lord. Make a mark. Make a mark. Give Jacob an extra skip in his limp, a step. Whew, make a mark on Jacob here on Greg Bader, God. Put a Jacob spirit in him. Wrestle till you win. Wrestle until you win. And we will I worship you, Jesus. Lindsay, go to Mary Crosby. Put your hand on her stomach. Your name. God will raise up a child from this womb, he says, that will be mighty. There's a generational blessing on your womb. There's a generational blessing on your womb, says the Lord. It's time for this family to be set on fire and ablaze for the Lord. Christy, the Lord says today, lift your hands, Christy. The Lord says today, he's bringing you out of the old into the new. Yesterday is gone, tomorrow is here, and today is here, and tomorrow is guaranteed for you. Keep walking forward. Your past is gone. It's washed away like water under a stream. It's gone. Whew. Turn that music up, if you will. Fresh fire in Jesus' name. Oh. Fresh fire in the name of Jesus. Fresh fire. Be lifted high for all the world to see. Ron, lift your hands, Ron. Father, I pray over Ron. Whatever work you're doing in his heart, continue to do it, Lord. Continue to do it, Lord. Bless this man. Bless this man, Lord. And strengthen and increase him. Encourage him. Build him up. Though none go with me, still he would go, Father. Let him decide in his heart, if, if nobody goes, I'm going. Set him on fire, Lord, for you. Continue to do a work in his life, oh God. Father, bless this child, bless this home, bless this body, bless this home, bless this marriage. Father, in Jesus' name, I bless you. freedom in the name. There's healing in the name. I bless Brian today, Lord, in Jesus' name. God bless Miss Glennis. Salvation Many more years of strength, God. Heal these knees. Lord, set a fire in Daryl. Stir Daryl up, oh Lord. Bless Daryl. Oh, bless him, Lord. Touch every child and grandchild and great grandchild of this family. So Wednesday night, I thought it was pretty ironic that you were sitting here at that town meeting when Bridget invited you. I thought to myself, now here's Brenda, who has seen everything this town ups and here she is sitting at a meeting, you know, invited through just a chance moment. I did, I, the Lord just kind of quickened me when I saw you. I was like, that's just incredible, you know. And, and maybe that's spiritual, you know what I mean? Like here you are. Growing up as a child and watching and having the Father, and here you are still in this town. And I feel like what God's doing with our community is what He's also doing with you, which is reviving. And so, God, I ask you over Brenda, continued revival in her heart. Heal this minor infirmity in her body. Oh, 
in the name of Jesus, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire in Jesus. Over every one of your brothers and sisters I'm praying for right now. Maybe I don't have the key and maybe you don't have the key and maybe they don't have the key. But the Holy Spirit has the keys to your family. And I ask you, God, to touch Julie's family, her brothers, her sisters, nieces and nephews, a revival in her family, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, enter the prayers of Carol's heart for his sons, for his family. Everything he's asking you about, God, touch it and bless. Answer those prayers, Lord, a fresh fire. Let's all lift our hands one more time. He's the way, the truth. Everybody, to say this with me, Lord, we're open for fresh fire. Set me on fire. Now tell the Lord, say, Lord, it doesn't matter how long it lasts, I'll take it. I need fresh fire. Stir me up. So the last Sing that. Turn it up. Turn it up, if you will. Come on, it's a light song. Turn it up. Worship is holy in name. Yeah, it's beautiful. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I worship your soul. the Lord a wave offering right here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Oh.
Stop worrying about what other people are thinking. Stop worrying about what they're saying. It doesn't matter. You're going to have to stand before God face to face. Eye to eye. Quit worrying about what they think. And my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise. Oh. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. If you need healing in your body, healing's here. Whoa. I ask you, God, to send this place fresh fire. Awaken every volunteer, awaken every servant leader, awaken every teacher. Awaken every singer, awaken every giver, awaken every worker and worshiper. Thank you, God. How many feel like God's broken the cycle in your life today? I do too. Oh. David, it's great to see you today, my brother. Phil, Holly, it's great to see y'all today, my brother, my sister. Who am I missing? If you hadn't been here in a while, I'm so glad you're here today. Let's make our declaration say, I am whole, I am healed, and I am prosperous. Come on, say, God is good, Jesus is the King, and the Holy Spirit works. And you're going to leave this place today and you're going to live in this. You can live off this a good couple of days right here, but it won't last forever. You got you to gotta pick up the fork and the spoon spiritually. Amen. I bless you today. Be whole, be healed, be prosperous. No evil shall befall you. No plague come near your dwelling because your feet have stood in the very place this morning that God has put, planted, and purposed you to be in. And by tithing your feet to this house, you've honored God's house. God loves this house. God is favored, and because of that, all things are not good, but they will work toward the good of His glory and your profit. Don't quit. God is good. Christ is King, and the Holy Spirit works. I release you in Jesus' name. Please love on somebody. They might have your key as you are.